Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation. I would like to call this meeting of the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation to order. We'll begin with our roll call of members present. For each commissioner, are you please uh, answer if you're present. Commissioner Anderson. Present. Commissioner Haynes. Present. Commissioner Hughes. Present. Commissioner Johnston. Sorry. Commissioner Gentry. Like we are having some um, technical difficulties. We'll wait for um, Dr. Steele. There you go. Thank you. Dr. Steele, you can continue. I am getting a message on technical difficulties as well. Can you all hear me? Yeah. I may, let me stop my video to see if that helps. I'll continue. The Parks Board must vote on the record that the COVID-19 pandemic requires it to hold a telephonic meeting as permitted under the governor's executive order number 16 and that contrary rules are suspended. If anyone would like to propose a motion to adopt the telephonic meeting, please raise your hand and I will call on you. Commissioner Scott Barnes. Um, I make a motion to um, um, hold a telephonic meeting. Commissioner uh, Gentry. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Um, are there any comments on this motion? I'll go through the seeing none. I'll go through the list of commissioners in, in attendance. Commissioner Anderson. Approved. Commissioner Haynes. Approved. Commissioner Hughes. Approved. Commissioner Gentry. Approved. Commissioner Johnston. Approved. Commissioner Scott Barnes. Approved. The motion passes. Thank you all so much. I just wanted to add a note for our audience, for those listening at home. The Parks Board members here are calling in remotely. They are in separate places. When I ask them to raise their hand, that's an action occurring through the software. We'll move now to the appeal, appeal of decisions pursuant to the provisions of 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws. Please take notice that decisions of the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation may be appealed to the Chancery Court of Davidson County for review under a common law writ of certiorari. Any appeal must be filed within 60 days after entry of a final decision by the board. Any person or other entity considering an appeal should consult with an attorney to ensure that time and procedural requirements are met. We'll move now to consideration of the minutes. Have you had an opportunity to read the minutes from our November meeting? Is there a motion for approval? Please signify by raising your hand and I will call on you. Commissioner Gentry. Move approval of the minutes as presented. Thank you so much, Commissioner Hughes. Second. Thank you so much. It's been properly moved and seconded. Um, is there, are there any comments, any discussion? Seeing none, we will take a roll call vote. Commissioner Anderson. Approved. Commissioner Haynes. Approved. Commissioner Hughes. Approved. Commissioner Gentry. Approved. Commissioner Johnston. Approved. Commissioner Scott Barnes. Approved. Thank you so much. The, the motion passes. We'll move now to Metro Council referrals. Uh, Director Oda, are there any referrals from council members? Uh, uh, Madam Chair, I did see Council Member Van Reese present earlier. I don't see her on my device now, but don't want to overlook her if she is here. That okay. is the only council member that I've seen so far. Okay, I also see that Council Member Van Reese has raised her hand. I'd like to acknowledge you. Yes, and uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Um, wow, okay, here we started another one, right? Um, I uh, wanted to thank you again for your uh, 
due diligence and uh, support of uh, the uh, parks and uh, recreation uh, activities throughout the county. I, I wanted to just chime in to let you know that we'll be uh, having some guests uh, join uh, your director uh, on uh, next Monday, the 11th of January at 4 p.m. for our second conversation about Metro Parks uh, with the uh, Parks Committee. Uh, these uh, are being recorded. We've had several um, uh, folks watch uh, the, the first uh, event uh, on, uh, I guess it was in October, and uh, we're going to wrap around. And I believe that uh, we have uh, some stories that will be told about uh, how the folks that work in Metro Parks have seen uh, the community uh, respond to and benefit from uh, the work that Metro Parks and Rec does. So uh, I invite you all to attend at four o'clock on Monday, the 11th. Uh, there, uh, we are on the Metro calendar and there's a way for you to, to, to click and, and log in there and see the agenda. If for some reason you miss it, it will be uh, again archived uh, for watching on the Metro YouTube channel uh, afterward. Uh, I also understand that um, uh, 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 Monica is going to be uh, involved in um, a conversation as it relates to uh, the Metro Budget 101 series um, and we'll be, uh, I'm sure, uh, communicating once again a lot of the stuff that we talked about in October. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to thank you uh, all for uh, your uh, diligence in helping uh, Nashville uh, uh, kind of remind itself about the benefits uh, and um, and really the impacts uh, of what uh, this department does. And uh, we'll continue to do our best to make sure that uh, you're funded to the, the best uh, uh, ability uh, that we have. So uh, if there's any questions along the way, feel free in between meetings if you want to reach out to me directly by email. Uh, with any ideas or opportunities that I can be proactive about, uh, please make sure and uh, don't be a stranger. And uh, I'm looking forward to an extremely productive uh, new year. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Council Member Van Rees. We appreciate you. We appreciate your time and your support. Counts uh, Commissioner Gentry, I still see your hand raised. Did you have any additional comment? just meant to acknowledge. Actually, that was an accident, but I do have a question. I think the council lady referenced a Monica would be present participating in the budget, and I don't know who we're referring to there. Council oh, I'm Bandits. sorry. Uh, I, maybe I did I say Monica? I meant Monique, obviously. Um, so I don't even know why I said that. Uh, thank you for that opportunity for the correction. I, I need some more coffee. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Gentry, for not uh, pointing that out. And thank you, uh, Council Member Van Rees, for correcting that. We appreciate you. We're moving now to special presentations and introductions. Uh, Gerontana Development, LLC, to present their vision for Church Street Park. Just a note, during the May 2020 meeting of the Parks Board, commissioners approved a grant of an in-kind gift of $465,000 for the purpose of improvements to and programming for the historic, historical capital court from the Historical Capital Corridor Foundation. That work was to conclude by spring of 2021. And at its November 2020 Parks Board meeting, commissioners agreed to seek public comment comment from all groups who have ideas for improvements to Church Street Park, uh, located at 600 Church Street um, in Nashville. Interested parties were invited to present their ideas to the Parks Board during our meeting today. Again, Gerontana Development, LLC, will present their vision for Church Street Park today. I want to make sure that they're present. Their representative is present. My name is Tony Gerontana. I am present. Tana. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll now turn the microphone over to you. You have seven minutes. Thank you for being Thank here. You. Thank you very much for allotting me a couple of minutes this morning to talk with you about Church Street Park. As uh, many of you know, I've been active in development on Church Street for about 30 years. And so this is, um, and was there when the 
uh, uh, buildings burned down at this corner and the park was created back in 1996. So I have a keen interest in um, this parcel. Um, I'm hoping to encourage the board to pursue a long-term solution to the chronic challenges that Church Street Park has presented to the Church Street neighborhood. The park was closed last year for renovations in preparation for the Ann Dallas Dudley Centennial Anniversary. I understand that new grass has been planted and new landscaping installed. The atmosphere and walkability of the Church Street neighborhood has much improved since the park was closed. I am very hopeful that when it reopens, that improvement will continue and that the park will not just become a prettier homeless encampment. However, if the park reverts to its prior unacceptable state after reopening, I am requesting that the board issue a request for proposal for the long-term repurposing of the park in a manner that will enhance the Church Street neighborhood, including our magnificent Robert A.M. Stern design library across the street. If the board issues an RFP, my company will submit a proposal, which I will pre preview, uh, review for you here. A, MDHA owns a property at Joe Johnson and 16th um, that it has sought to redevelop permanent supportive housing for several years. I've worked with uh, on that property with MDHA for about eight years. Oh, our company will provide the funds and expertise to undertake development of that property along with MDHA with 60 residential units. 15 of those units will be for homeless youth, 15 for homeless vet veterans, 15 for intellectually uh, uh, development dis um, delayed um, uh, constituents, IDD residents. And as each of the IDD residents need a caregiver, an additional 15 units would be provided for those caregivers. Conceptual plans um, are being submitted along with my presentation to each of you today um, and are subject, of course, to MDHA approval. The project has a budget of $9 million, not including um, our fees and overhead, which would be waived and would be totally financed by my company and our associates. Upon completion, the property and completed development uh, would remain the property of MDHA free and clear um, or one of its nonprofit affiliates. This project would be a significant advance towards achieving Metro's stated desire to provide permanent supportive housing for homeless and other disadvantaged residents. In return, Metro Parks would convey the park property to our company with entitlements that would facilitate a magnificent redevelopment of that property, which would enhance the Church Street neighborhood, including the library, and provide an enormous boost to Metro's property tax rolls. I want to emphasize in closing that our primary goal is a, pri a positive repurposing of Church Street Park. The work currently being undertaken and proposed may do that. And if so, you will find no bigger supporter of that effort than me. However, if it does not, I would respectfully request that the board undertake a request for proposal process that, um, so that we can identify a mechanism to address the chronic challenges presented by the park once and for all. I appreciate your service to the city and your consideration of this request. Um, as I mentioned, a copy of this presentation, along with um, a set of the plans of the, of the uh, project that we're proposing to develop in cooperation with MDHA, um, will be sent to each of you, each of you this morning. And um, that can, uh, I'm happy to answer questions, but that concludes my presentation. Thank you so much again for being here, Mr. Jarantana. Are there any questions from our commissioners? Seeing none, wanna make sure. 
Seeing none, we will look forward to the um, the plan, presentation and plan that you will uh, send to each of us. We again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Have a great year. Thank you, you too. We're moving now to old business. 08-19-06, staff to revisit recommendation from the board regarding initiation, initiating the petition process for removal, relocation of the private Confederate monument in Centennial Park. Um, there was a previous vote on this um, in August of 2019. Our vote was to allow the statue to remain in the park, but to add contextual language. Uh, signage around um, the monument. This past summer, board member Susanna Scott Barnes recommended that we revisit this vote based on the events of the summer um, with the uh, untimely deaths of uh, George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, uh, to name two. I want to call on, if it's okay with you, Commissioner Scott Barnes, you wanted us to revisit this, and so I wanted to give you an opportunity to speak um, to this issue. Thank you. Um, I, I, I do feel like um, we had just voted on it, so it seemed like um, it was kind of a quick uh, uh, amount of time that I, I brought it back up again, but I did feel like considering all the, you know, all the events that were happening in the summer, it would make sense for us to, to revisit it. Um, to, to me, I guess, um, I know there's, you know, we can talk about um, kind of the the fact that the state is plays a role in, in this um, monument and our ability to uh, make changes are restricted by, by the state. But I do think that um, with the Centennial Parks renovation and the park being open again, it seems to me like um, we hadn't seen any additional vandalism or any um, activity around it, but that might have been due to the fact that it was behind a chain link fence. Um, so uh, I, I see this as a um, kind of a divisive symbol um, that um, I have, you know, concerns about um, as a park board member, and um, I would like to, um, you know, hear from the rest of the board. Um, and I, I would also like to um, raise the point that it is, it is park's property, and if this vandalism you know, is more severe or continues that that becomes kind of a cost issue for the Parks Department to continue maintaining it. Um, so I think there have been some alternatives in addition to the context and the, and the um, what we had, you know, the signage and interpretive signage. Um, it's my understanding that the, um, the um, Centennial Park master plan included relocating it within the um, within the park to the flagpole hill where there could be more spa space for con contextualizing it and putting additional signage and there are other civil war um, related items there um, so those are just some um, some thoughts that I have and and um, I'd love to hear from the rest of the board Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Scott Barnes. I appreciate you for bringing this uh, back to our attention. Uh, is, are there any comments from the board at this time? Any questions or any action? Commissioner Hughes. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I guess I would like a little clarity on what the action would be. It's um, the, the um, it, it says the staff is to revisit recommendation from the board regarding an initiating petition. So I'm 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 not I'm not sure what we're being asked to do. I um, agree with um, Commissioner Scott Barnes. It's a divisive symbol, um, and I think it it um, I'd love to see 
us take a different action. Um, but I'm not really sure what we're being asked to do um, with this. Commissioner Hughes, this is Macy. I can shed a little bit of insight. So when we talked about this um, about a year and a half ago, uh, we talked about how we're a little bit um, constrained by state law. So generally, the Tennessee Heritage Protection Act prohibits the removal, relocation, or renaming of a memorial that is located on public property. Um, and this statue obviously is. So a public entity, AKA the Parks Board, may petition the Tennessee Historical Commission for a waiver from that prohibition, and then they will vote on whether to grant or deny that waiver. Now, I will say that the Tennessee Historical Commission is made up of 20, 24 or 26 members that are appointed by the governor of the state of Tennessee. Um, so we would have um, the governor's appointees voting on whether we can remove it or even relocate it within our own park. Commissioner Hughes. Thank, uh, uh, thank you, Macy. Uh, I appreciate you reminding us of that context. So um, I would love for the board to um, discuss the possibility of um, of petitioning the Tennessee Historical Commission. I think we would need to know if we were wanting to move it or remove it. Um, but I, I think I would, I'm in favor of um, uh, going that going that route. And I don't know if I need to do a motion or what. I, Commissioner Gentry can help me with that, I'm sure. Commissioner Hughes and to the board members, we are able to revisit this as a vote. Um, I would like to add that uh, I too am in favor of uh, revisiting this and uh, the removal as well. I do want to say, um, I, I believe this came back up as well because our uh, legislators are um, are discussing the removal of the uh, bus, Nathan Bedford Forrest bus as well in the um, state uh, chambers. And so um, it's a timely discussion in light of that as well it's to come back up on their agenda. And so this will be a good time for uh, Metropolitan Parks uh, to present our uh, action to them as well. I see that Commissioner Gentry has raised your hand. So I have a question. I was thinking about the same situation going on with the state. And so, Macy, my question is, is the state having to go through the same petition? Is that is that considered public property? I am not sure what process they're going through. Um, I know that it seems like every year the legislature votes on it. Uh, I don't know what their next steps are. Um, I would assume so, but I, I'm not 100% sure. It seems like every year they vote on whether or not to um, remove the bust of Nathan Bedford Forrest. Well, I do understand, and after uh, I watched very closely those deliberations and presentations that was made during the conversation there, and the request was to actually have that bust relocated to the Tennessee State Museum. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's really that's what they're asking for and there was a representative from the museum there that said that they would accept it it would be a minute before they found space for it but that they would definitely um, that they would be willing to accept it so um i guess to the to question that commissioner hughes raised i don't know if our i think we just need to be clear if there's going to be a motion if we're asking for it to be simply removed or relocated uh, so that it doesn't sit in a position that uh, suggests that it is indicative uh, of, of what we want Nashville to uh, to represent, not only to its citizens, but to visitors as well. Are there any other additional comments? I can entertain a motion or further discussion. Commissioner Scott Barnes. I'd like to make a motion that we petition the state to remove the, the monument. Okay, it's been moved that we uh, petition the state to remove the monument. I see uh, Commissioner Gentry. I'll second. We have a, a 
um, motion to remove the monument and a second. Is there any discussion? Any questions? Seeing none, I'll call for a roll call vote. Commissioner Anderson. Approved. Commissioner Gentry. Approved. Commissioner Haynes. Approved. Commissioner Hughes. Approved. Commissioner Johnston. Approved. Commissioner Scott Barnes. Approved. Thank you so much. The motion passes. We're going to move now to 12-20-07. Nashville Electric Service is requesting a 20 by 5 easement on Orchard Bend Park along Pettus Road, parcel number 1740000070 to install a pole wire anchor. The uh, acquisition committee met this morning. We'll now hear a report from the acquisition committee uh, by Chair, Chair Jeff Haynes. Thank you, Dr. Steele. The Acquisitions Committee met and approved uh, this easement uh, unanimously. Thank you so much. Are there any additional questions from the board? Commissioner Gentry, your hand is still raised, possibly from the previous conversation. Thank you so much. Um, if anyone would like to propose a motion to this effect, please raise your hand. Commissioner Hughes. I move to approve. Thank you so much, Commissioner Anderson. Second. Thank you so much. It's been properly moved and seconded. Uh, we'll go for, uh, do a roll call vote. Commissioner Anderson. Approve. Commissioner Gentry. Approve. Commissioner Haynes. Approve. Commissioner Hughes. Approve. Commissioner Johnston. Approve. Commissioner Scott Barnes. Approve. Thank you so much. The motion passes. We'll move now to the consent agenda. I will accept a motion to accept the uh, consent agenda in its entirety. Commissioner Haynes. Move approval of the consent agenda. Madam Chair. So much. Yes, yes. Excuse me, Madam Chair, I'm so sorry to, to interrupt. Uh, one revision to the consent agenda, um, bullet number, the first bullet under ampl amplification and approval the Diamond Head Logistics Chili Cook-Off has, um, they will postpone their event. So we would like to um, revise the consent agenda to admit that, omit that event. Thank you so much, Director Odom. Uh, Commissioner uh, Haynes, you made a, a motion for approval as it was noted. Would you like to add the omittance to your Yes, move Motion. approval of the consent agenda as amended. Thank you so much. Commissioner Hughes? Second. Thank you so much. It's been properly moved and seconded. We'll move now to a roll call vote. Commissioner Anderson? Approve. Commissioner Gentry? Approve. Commissioner Haynes? Approve. Commissioner Hughes? Approve. Commissioner Johnston? Approve. Commissioner Scott Barnes? Approve. Thank you so much. It's been proper. That, that motion passes. Excuse me. We're moving now to new business 01 21 03. Mr. Rob Bramblett requests the board to accept a Tennessee walking horse appraised at $20,000 to be used by the Mounted Patrol of the Metro Parks Police. Uh, Director Odom, is there a staff recommendation? Staff recommends approval. Thank you so much. If anyone would like to propose a motion to this effect, please raise your hand and I will call on you. Commissioner Scott Barnes. Uh, make a motion to approve. Thank you so much, Commissioner Anderson. Second. Thank you so much. It's been properly moved and seconded. Are there any questions, any discussion? Thank you so much. Seeing none, I'll go through the roll call vote. Commissioner Anderson. Approve. Commissioner Gentry. Approve. Commissioner Haynes? Approve. Commissioner Hughes? Approve. Commissioner Johnston? Approve. Commissioner Scott Barnes? Approve. The motion passes, thank you. 01-21-04, Ms. Gretchen Pritchett, president of the National Parks Foundation, requests the board to accept a donation not to exceed $100,000 for improvements to the tennis courts in Elmington Park. Director Odom, is there a recommendation from the staff? Staff recommends approval. Thank you so much. 
if anyone would like to propose a motion to this effect, please raise your hand and I will call on you. Commissioner Hughes. I move approval. Commissioner Anderson. Second. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been properly moved and seconded. I will now go, are there any questions? Excuse me. <clears throat> I'll now go through a roll call vote. Commissioner Anderson. Approve. Commissioner Gentry. Approve. Commissioner Haynes. Approve. Commissioner Hughes. Approve. Commissioner Johnston. Approve. Commissioner Scott Barnes. Approve. Thank you so much. The motion passes. 01-21-05, Ms. Katie Burris, president of the Friends of Shelby Park and Bottoms, requests the board to accept an in-kind grant valued at an estimated $1,500 for golf design services at Shelby Golf Course. Director Odom is there with staff recommendation. Staff recommends approval. Thank you so much. If, if anyone would like to propose, propose a motion to this effect, please raise your hand and I will call on you. Commissioner Gentry. Move approval. Thank you. Commissioner Hughes. Second. Thank you so much. Uh, if anyone has any comments, please raise your hand and I'll call on you. Okay, we'll go now through the roll call vote. Commissioner Anderson. To approve. Commissioner Gentry. Approve. Commissioner Haynes. Approve. Commissioner Hughes. Approve. Commissioner Johnston. Approve. Commissioner Scott Barnes. Approve. Thank you so much. The motion passes. We'll move now to capital projects and update. Tim Nitch. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll just touch on changes from last month. And December is usually a slow month, but we've made some progress. Um, in Centennial Park Phase 2, the Tennessee Woman Suffrage Monument is now unfenced, so that is open to the public. Um, a new project on your list this month is the Elmington Tennis Courts Refurb, and that is related to the grant that you all just approved, um, and that's in the queue for construction bidding. Um, construction rebid of Mill Ridge and Ravenwood Parks is underway, and um, those bids have been received, so we're in the process of reviewing those with Metro Procurement. And in Watkins Park, the pump track project is almost finished. They've got to put some finishing touches on it, hopefully within the next couple of weeks. And then I believe the plan is just to have a just to have a soft opening until some point um, at which COVID allows the partners and parks, partners who've been involved in that project and Metro Parks to have a have a larger event. And that is it. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll move now to upcoming special activities and events. Jackie Jones. Good morning. So I have two events to tell you about. The first is the Shelby Park Shootout Disc Golf Tournament from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. on January 15th to the 17th at Middleton in Shelby Park. Uh, disc golf is a sport if you would know that doesn't, uh, that does lend itself to the safety protocols required by COVID-19. Shelby Park is one of five disc golf locations in the city. The second event to tell you about will help you experience the joy of painting with a certified Bob Ross instructor. Uh, the three hour class is called Northern Lights it's scheduled for Friday, January 15th at Bellevue Community Center and Saturday, January 16th at the uh, Centennial Arts Center. Uh, there should be at least probably a few of you who are familiar with Bob Ross. The man and his painting techniques are iconic. Uh, so needless to say, seating is limited in both classes and COVID-19 protocols are in place. That concludes my report. Thank you so much. We'll move now to the report of the director, Director Odom. Thank you, Madam Chair. Please forgive me if I don't uh, turn my video on. I'm having some bandwidth issues on this end and don't want to um, hamper the system any more than I need to. Um, but uh, happy new year to everyone. Um, I hope everybody's new year has started off uh, well. Um, as far as the department, as um, others have mentioned, we are still very busy at Metro Parks. It's slower now, but we are still very busy. Um, as Council Member Van Rees mentioned earlier, I and some of our teammates will be uh, joining the uh, Parks and Library 
Library Subcommittee of the Metro Council on next Monday to uh, share some stories and talk about our department and give some um, some insights, some um, unique insight and perspectives that only our employees uh, and teammates can share. So we're very much looking forward to uh, spending time with that committee. Um, preliminary discussions about the upcoming budget do continue. And I have a conversation, we'll have a conversation later this week with um, the mayor's office and the finance department about uh, fiscal year 21 capital budget needs. Um, the focus will be on uh, critical needs, safety and high, high priority um, projects. Uh, Metro is still in a challenging financial position. Um, and of course, there's an element of uncertainty. And I really appreciate um, the uh, city leadership looking to departments to help um, inform the funding strategy and based on the needs of the department and priorities. Um, as some of you may know, our policy committee working group uh, comprised of Commissioner Gentry, Commissioner Haynes, uh, Councilor Amos and myself met last month and um, have uh, settled on some uh, possible revisions to our policy, uh, to our naming policy. Uh, Ms. Frazier, as you all may know this as well, uh, Ms. Frazier is working to coordinate a meeting of our full policy committee um, to review those revisions and discuss those. Uh, please keep in mind that all park board members are um, a part of that policy committee. Additionally, uh, Ms. Frazier is also coordinating a meeting of our finance committee. All park, park board members are members of that committee as well. So we have some, um, we have business to, to discuss on both of those committees. And I, I hope that you all will um, make it a priority to be present if you can. Um, I want to thank our staff um, for being at the ready and supporting where they were needed during one of Nashville's, uh, another one of Nashville's emergency events. Um, as some of you may know, the day of the bomb and Christmas morning, the Red Cross set up um, a regional, uh, set up at the regional, East Regional Community Center to assist displaced residents. Um, William Manuel, who is uh, one of our part team players, uh, was there on Christmas day and uh, he kept in close contact with me. So I'd like to thank him. I'd also like to thank all of our other teammates who um, helped in that effort. I, I don't want to start naming names. I will name a few, but I know there are many more folks on our team that, as usual, played their role to support um, our city um, and our city residents in their time of need. But John Holmes, Stevon Nellums, and Darlene Morrow, um, among others, were also very supportive in, in making that happen and working with the Red Cross. So I wanted to um, publicly thank all of them and everyone on our team who helped to support. Um, that concludes my report for this week, for this month. Thank you so much for the report. And thank you to the uh, Parks Board, excuse me, the Parks uh, uh, Department members uh, for your service. We appreciate you. Announcements, requests for future agenda items and open items. Are there any from the board? Madam Chair, I, I only have one. Um, okay. And it is just to keep it at the front of our minds that we still need to uh, pay homage or honor uh, Mr. Stan Fawcett. We had hoped to have him um, at the meeting this month, um, but uh, his, his schedule did not permit, but we will continue to work toward that, working around his availability. So we're excited to be able to honor Mr. Fawcett for his service. So let's just keep that on the agenda. Okay, thank you so much for the reminder. Are there any other things we need to discuss? Seeing no hands, we're gonna, uh, we'll, we'll call for this meeting to be adjourned. I wanna say happy new year and to, to you all to have a good rest of the week. Happy new year. This is our closing. We're now adjourned. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, 
or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.org.